Come on, those toys of yours aren't that dangerous. Uh, then why hasn't she woken up yet? Because she's sound asleep. <laughs> Didn't you hear her sleep talking? Ah, oh, poor child. Sounded like a bad nightmare. Tell me the truth, Sampo. What are you gonna do about the Overworld girl? What am I gonna do about her? Why, wait for the opportunity and send her back, together with the rest of them, of course. I... Hey, come on, what's with the... You're a bad liar, Sampo Koski. What? I didn't mean to bring her along. The smoke was too dense. I was in a daze. Before I knew it, I'd somehow dragged her down here, too. What are you up to, Sampo? Why do you insist on getting caught up in overworld affairs that have nothing to do with you? If it's a whole lot more attention from Wildfire you want, you're going about it the right way. Hey now, Sampo Koski's primary concern is taking care of his friends. These guys scratch my back. How could I live with myself if I didn't scratch theirs? And another thing, where does Wildfire get off? Assuming that these fine folks won't come in useful to them, huh? I mean, you never know. Which is why you've set them loose in the underground? Come on, accidents happen. I'll have them rounded up in no time. <sighs> that girl... Get her back as soon as possible, then don't let her out of your sight. The underground has been sealed off for over ten years now. Uh, the children won't even remember what overgrounders look like. If a girl in a silver main guard uniform suddenly shows up, what would Wildfire do with her? What would they do with you? All right, I get it. I'm setting off right now. I'll have to trouble you to look after them while I'm gone, ma'am. Hey, sleepyhead. Looks like you're awake. How are you feeling? Any aches or pains? I hope you're joking. <laughs> That's either an interesting metaphor, or you hit your head. Well, now that you're awake, you should probably try moving your limbs. I'm Natasha, a doctor in the underground. You've already spent a day in my clinic. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> you're very polite. Sampo's gone to clear up a mess of his own making. So, I'm looking after you in the meantime. Based on your current state, I don't think there's any cause for alarm. You seem perfectly healthy. So, if you don't mind, I'll go and take a look at the other patients. Sampo just told me that you lost consciousness. He didn't say why. Still, I'll wager it had something to do with him. He's always tinkering with his devices. Anyway, the opinion of the clinic is that none of you have come to harm. Sampo told me. Don't worry, the Silvermane guards won't follow you below ground. We've been cut off from the surface for many years. <laughs> Even when things were at their worst down here, they never showed. Of course, I don't know the whole story behind why the Architects ordered the lockdown. Who knows? Thanks to you, they might finally be about to lift it. Something that Wildfires wanted to achieve for a long time now. Oh, please, you needn't worry. You've just been asleep for a while. I barely had to lift a finger. I might have exaggerated your condition for Sampo's years, but that guy owes me. You better bring me back some medicine. They've been up for a while already. The young guy with the dark hair left first. He went with Sampo. Your rowdier friend took off soon after waking up. I imagine she's taking a stroll nearby. As for the girl in the Silvermane guard uniform, I told Sampo to watch her, but it seems that he left his post and she made a run for it. Good question. <laughs> He's a man of mystery. He claims to be a simple cross-border businessman. Not that there's much to interest an overworlder down here. Either way, he's got a surprising number of connections. 
I've managed to secure more than a few urgent medical supplies through him, and he's been a big help to Wildfire. <clears throat> In any case, I don't think his intentions are sinister. It's a grassroots organization. Think of it as the Silvermane Guards of the Underground, but less stone-hearted. <laughs> no need to thank me. It's a doctor's duty to heal. I gotta find March 7th and Dan Hung. But where should I start? that if I win hide and seek, you'll tell Big Sister March all the ins and outs. Yep, all the ins and outs. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it just means you'll tell me all the details. No hiding anything and no telling fibs. <laughs> Hook isn't an overgrounder, you know. Hook never tells fibs. Yeah, never. Well, that's settled then. Okay, let's play. Huh? You! Uh, when did you get here? Oh, quit acting like a child. It's like this. After I woke up, that doctor said Sampo had taken Don Hung with him. I went around in circles trying to find the blue-haired scoundrel and bumped into these kids. They say they know where he is. But they said I had to join the moles or something if I wanted to find out. And to do that, I had to prove my strength by winning a game of hide-and-seek. Do you get it? Huh, when did you start being so nice? Are you done with your secret talk? The most time is precious. Yeah, precious. Okay, okay, we're done. Pitch Dark Hook the Great. This is my friend. She also wants to join the moles. Can she play too? Um, sure. I guess so. Then you guys are seeking. <sighs> Boss. They don't seem very smart. Why don't we do a practice one first? Hmm, you're right, Julian. Okay, let's do a practice one. I'll hide. You two have to find me. So, you kids think you're better than us, huh? Just you wait and see. It's simple. When you see one of them, you just have to catch them. Answer this question. What? 
But we caught you! What's with the Q&A? Huh... I thought I had you there. Hey, where are you going? Come back, come back. They won't be hiding that far away. Locking off, finally. Hmm, something's not right. That guy's been staring at us this whole time. Hide and seek might have to wait. Let's see what he wants. Hmm. <whistles> My instincts are telling me something's not right with this guy. <clears throat> How many eight-year-olds do you see walking around that look like this, huh? All right, the jig is up. Your voice gave it away. <clears throat> but I'm Julian of a thousand faces. <sighs> Why did you have to talk to me? My reputation is ruined. What will the boss think? No need for the melodrama. That was still a magical performance. Don't run! I got you, Hook! It's not fair! I'm the boss of the moles! How can I lose to a bunch of villains? Do your worst! I'm not afraid. What are they feeding you kids down here? I... Uh, I'm sorry, boss. I failed. Darn! How did you see through Julian's disguise? What villainy is this? <laughs> Those with keen eyes see the dust between the stars. I came up with that, by the way. Hey, I read books, you know. So, Pitch Dark Hook the Great. You can tell us now, right? Mm, yes. The boss of the moles is true to her word. Hook saw the blue-haired guy take your dark-haired friend to the Fight Club. The Fight Club? You don't talk about it. Is this more secret talk? Uh, Pitch Dark Hook the Great. Where is the Fight Club? Can you show us the way? Hmm. But it's an obvious building. Grown-ups are just useless. Come with Hawk, I'll take you over. Thanks, oh great one. That's pitch dark Hook the Great to you. Who said you could shorten my title? A club just for fighting. Who knew undergrounders had such brutal hobbies? In fact, it's awesome! They let you take part? When did this place last have an inspection? Loads of kids take part. Ah, despicable. My criminal activity senses are tingling.
Stuart, you see anything. What? Uh, when did you... Did, did you hear what Hook was saying? Uh, good. Wait a second. You did too hear everything Hook was saying. <laughs> grown up fights are less fun than ours. So what if I keep seeing... You have to use your fists, palms, and even your fingers in combat. If you don't know how, you're done for. You need to train until your body is an extension of the mind. Fists, palms, and fingers. Ugh, rock, paper, scissors! Ugh, phew, no wonder I was confused. There are so many... What? Oh, when did... Good. Hook didn't... <laughs> Grown-up fights are less fun than ours. You have to use your fists. Fists, palms, and fingers. Ugh, rock, paper, scissors! Ugh, phew. No wonder I was confused. My friend! Brothers and sisters! Are you ready for today's most spectacular, spine-tingling, earth-shattering contest? On one side, recommended by tall, blue, and handsome, the unsmiling, pulverizing power of the new kid on the block, Cold Dragon Young! And his opponent is none other than the unfeeling, incendiary, explosive might of Team Robomatic! All praise to Boss Farag! Given that no other fighter was willing to take on the strength of Team Robomatic, Cold Dragon Young will face off against these opponents alone! On learning his fate, the brave young fighter had one thing to say. Whatever! And so, let the semifinals of the 1758th Fighting King Challenge begin! Quick, let's help him! Oh, brothers and sisters, an unexpected turn of events! Two members of the audience have charged into the octagon! It looks like they want to team up with Cold Dragon Young! <laughs> so you're awake. Yeah, the first thing we did was go look for you! And now that we found you, we're trying to make sure you don't get your butt kicked! You're welcome! Brothers and sisters, you can feel their passion! The magnetic pull of this electric sport is undeniable! But let me reiterate, these competitions are for professionals only. Whatever you do, kids, don't try this at home. And Cold Dragon Young is signaling that the contest will go ahead. He's just itching to get into it. And so are we. It's the Iron Fists of Cold Dragon Young and friends versus the Iron Skin of Team Robomatic. I can take them on my own, you know. Oh, we need to work on your emotional intelligence. Oh, what a beautiful performance! Cold Dragon Young and his last minute admirers emerge victorious! Admirers? How come we don't get cool nicknames? Forget it. I think our taste in nicknames is different. Hey, look! It's Sampo! Let's get after him. Hey! Hey! It's you! I was just thinking to myself, am I getting robbed? Who are these people following me? So... You know, you start to walk a little faster, and anywho, if I had just turned around, I could have thrown open my arms and said a big hi to my old friends. Save it. You saw us in there and got scared, so you pulled a runner. Me? Scared? Oh, <laughs> my friends, what do I have to fear? <laughs> Surely I haven't done anything to offend you.
Set him up? <laughs> yeah, with a job. You guys are new here, and let me tell you, you're gonna need some cash. And Sampo Koski stops at nothing to help his friends. Saving you was just the beginning. I have to consider your finances too. With me, you get the full service, folks. That's friendship. I had no choice but to take you guys down here. It was too dangerous for us on the surface. We're wanted criminals. Sure, the underworld has its drawbacks, but at least the guards would never follow us. We're safe here. Be that as it may, did you really have to poison us? Maybe you've forgotten, but we were in a tight spot, my friend. There was no time to think. I had to use whatever I could. Hmm. So it wasn't to cover anything up? A secret that you didn't want anyone, including us, to find out? <laughs> it's true. Don Hung, what secret? Well, I'm not certain yet. But there's more to our friend here than meets the eye. You win. I'll help you to the best of my ability, free of charge, I might add. But please, don't go spreading rumors about me. <sighs> All right, to prove my sincerity, I'll introduce you to Wildfire. If you're looking for something down here, they're the ones to ask. Because you're looking for something? Why are you asking? Dan Hung told me you guys were searching for a... What's the word? Stellaron. Sounded pretty powerful. If anyone has a clue on its whereabouts, it'll be wildfire. You said I'd uncover a clue if I became the Fight Club champion. Uh, uh yeah. I mean, if you fought in the final round and won, you'd have incredible street cred right now. Wildfire wouldn't think twice about talking with you. I don't see the problem. Well, there's no such thing as a free lunch, of course. Wildfire has no reason to help you yet, so we'll just have to give them one. With your talents, we have nothing to worry about. I'm telling you, no matter where you go, there's only one rule to getting things done. Find the demand. You know, like supply and demand. Anyway, the underground has been sealed off for more than a decade. But do you think people here are just resigned to their fate? Well, if you want my opinion, they're a bunch of artless, stubborn fools. But who cares what I think, huh? They're a band of do-gooders who sprung up to maintain order in the underground after the Silverman guards withdrew, Wildfire set up shop. Still, don't underestimate them. We walk in the presence of giants. Have you heard that saying before? Well, Wildfire has giants in its midst. You'll see. Have a little faith. It's like I said, Sampo never lets friends who've helped him come to harm. <laughs> so what does Wildfire do all day? By everything. They keep the peace, uphold justice, fight for resources, distribute goods. The sliver of trust they have for me has to do with the last one. Joshua. What are those shiny rocks? Ah, this is Geomero, an exothermic ore. The underground and the surface are sealed off from one another, right? Well, only the Geomero transport line is still running. The underground sends ore to the surface, and the surface sends goods to the underground. At least in theory. Most Undergrounders are miners, and this is what they mine for a living. You know, if we didn't have Geomero to burn, this world would have frozen to death long ago. All right, let's keep moving. The person I was looking for isn't here. Oh, old Oleg isn't here either? 
Where is everyone? <laughs> so you're leading us on another wild goose chase? I wouldn't dare. Trust me, we're getting close. <sighs> huh? What's that huge structure in the distance? Oh, that's the furnace core. It's the pillar that connects the underworld and the overworld. People used to travel up and down that thing, but then... Then what? It's a long story. In any case, practically nothing moves up or down anymore. Except you. Oh, come on, my dear fellow. I thought we weren't going to discuss this. I beg you, the fewer rumors there are about me, the better. Zila's usually always out on patrol here at this time. What's Wildfire up to? Hmm, are they avoiding me? Uh, my friends, don't just stand there. This drama doesn't need any more bystanders. Oh? You know, it might be interesting to see you get in trouble. <sighs> we should avoid attracting too much attention. We can't just leave her. Opinion. But I agree with Don Hung. We can't just leave her to the bullies. Well said. The young lady is wise and righteous. Let's help her. All right, princess. Let's defend the pleasantries. <sighs> Catch someone on our turf? Well, how about a few rounds of me? <sighs> Darn it! Quick, disperse! Spineless thugs! Miss Zila, phew. It's a good thing you showed up when you did. My heartfelt thanks. These vagrants have got some nerve looking for trouble in wildfire terror. <sighs> Shut it, Sampo! This is you written all over it. Wildfire has countless issues on its plate right now. We don't need a side order of Koski. I hear Silvermane Guard is paying the Underworld a visit. Is that you? You kidnapped me and brought me to the Underground. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> Listen to her. What is the meaning of this? She still thinks she's an overworld princess. Do you know what's become of us down here while you live the easy life? Did you even consider the fate of the Underworlders? The Silvermane Guards aren't living the easy life. We are constantly engaged with the enemy, defending Bellabog from the scourge of attacking monsters and protecting all those above and below the surface. <laughs> Do you even hear yourself? You? Protect the underground? Redeploying every guard to the surface? Sealing off the only passageway? Protecting the so-called architects, more like it. The Madam Guardian has her reasons. <laughs> Enough talk. You're coming with me. Chief Oleg wants to see you, and he's got more than a few questions. Perfect, Miss Zila. We were just on our way to pay Chief Oleg a visit ourselves. Room for a few more? Fully booked. Who are they? What good is your name by itself? Well, it's like this. The Chief's in the market for specific talent. An urgent request, so I'm taking them to see him. We're looking for a Stellaron. It's the source of all the disasters here. If we find it, we can... <laughs> I would recommend you not recite your story to everyone you meet. Miss Hila won't understand it anyway, so let's save it for the Chief, hmm? Huh? You're right. I don't understand it. And I don't plan on passing the message on either. 
Wildfire's encountered trouble at the Great Mine. The Chief's busy. If you really want to find him, come look for me at the mine entrance. I'm leaving. How are you finding your first trailblazing expedition? Uh, that's good. I'm about to summarize the intel we've gathered so far. Did you want to listen? First, we have the underworld. A huge underground space. Miners have built towns here and are excavating Geomero. Hmm. We learned from Natasha that the Underworld shoulders the energy needs for their entire civilization. Laboring in the Underworld used to be a great honor, and there was regular movement between realms. Sampo mentioned the Furnace Core, which people would use to travel in both directions. Yet now, each realm is sealed off from the other. Only the automatic transport line for Geomero and goods is still in operation. The reason for sealing the Furnace Core still needs to be investigated. In addition, it appears that Sampo has secret connections that grant him passage between here and the surface. That may come in useful to us. <sighs> Up to now, apart from Branya, whom Sampo brought here, I still haven't seen a single Silvermane guard. At the Fight Club, I heard people say that the guards withdrew from the underground many years ago, and that it was the Supreme Guardian who gave the order. At the time, the Supreme Guardian was none other than Kokolia Rand. Next, we have our goal, the Stellaron. After we revealed our intentions, the Supreme Guardian suspended communications and sent soldiers to arrest us. Her reaction was strange, to say the least. It's too early to say, but it was a radical move. It means that we must have broached a highly sensitive subject, a secret that she's sparing no effort to protect. If I remember our discussion correctly, I think there are two main possibilities, the Architects and the Stellaron. I'm inclined to think it's the latter, but we lack evidence. <sighs> There's an old saying that goes, good fortune lies within bad, bad fortune lurks within good. Even when compared with the overworld, the underworld has a long history. There should be valuable intel here. Not to mention, Without the Supreme Guardian's interference, we have a better chance than ever of locating the Stellaron. Lastly, we have the main strength of the Underworld, Wildfire. After the Silvermane Guards withdrew, and in order to keep the peace, the residents of the Underworld spontaneously organized their own militia, thereby taking over the Guards' duties. Ally? It's a little premature to be talking about that. 
but Wildfire will be familiar with all manner of forces below ground. If we want to find Stellaron clues in the underground, I'm certain they can help. I don't know them. Trust isn't part of the picture yet. But speaking of trust, I suggest you don't place too much of yours in Sampo Kosky. He hasn't revealed his true intentions, but he has managed to corral us into a difficult situation, almost without us realizing. That's a dangerous person indeed. Hmm, that's all we need to summarize for now. If there's anything else you're not clear on, come and find me. Oh, hi! Wanna listen to my thoughts on the underground? Where should I... <laughs> my observational skills are second to none! Well, the underworld is surrounded by cliffs, and there's no obvious structure. It seems like a spread-out collection of mines and small towns, just like the outskirts of Bellabog. There's that huge pillar called the Furnace Core that's always in view. Maybe it's some kind of energy hub? From what I've seen, the residents are nearly all miners. It seems like the people here have less than those in the overworld. Still, the miners watch fights in their spare time. It's less pretentious than that theater they have on the surface. They're always in a hurry. The pace of life here is so fast. Things are pretty busy in the overworld too, but everything feels more relaxed up there. I'm not so good at analyzing people, but seeing as you asked, that guy, Ugh, he's lazy, lying, cunning, and evil. I don't like him. Can't stand the sight of him. I bet you think he's pretty entertaining. Watch out or he'll fool you. Ah, you mean that naughty kid we played hide and seek with? Dr. Natasha said that she's a handful, but that she also takes care of the homeless kids. Maybe she's more mature than she seems? Still, I can't believe how arrogant she is. I was pretty mad with her for a while. The Silvermane girl? She's pretty. I like looking at her. When I first met her, I thought she was kind of scary. But now it seems like there's something on her mind. I'm too nervous to ask her. At least she's not trying to arrest us anymore. She says what she thinks. I like her. And did you hear what she said about the Silvermane guards? <laughs> Sounded like she'd been waiting a long time to say it. I think I'd get along with her. If we can get her to help us, we'll bag a Stellaron in no time. If you hear any juicy gossip, um, uh, information, <laughs> come find me. Bored? Your big brother Sampo is always up for a chat. What kind of question is that? I'm your old pal Sampo Koski. We've been through thick and thin together. <gasps> what do you mean? We battled wind and snow, fought shoulder to shoulder against the great Japard Landau. I risked life and limb in the Fragmentum to save you from the evil clutches of the fearsome Branya Rand. How's that for thick and thin? Wildfire are one of my major clients, though the work is mostly odds and ends. Still, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> Who am I to complain if the money's right, huh? Zila works for them. Oleg's most trusted lieutenant. Not to her, I'm probably just a wildfire's lapdog. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but a very contented lapdog, I should add. <laughs> As a non-member, not a clue. They'd never tell me their ultimate aims. Shame, really. It's not like I'm a blabbermouth. A pleasure. Until next time. I will arrest you under the Supreme Guardian's decree. Nothing has changed. I am not your friend. <laughs> Ugh. 
there's something wrong with you. I saw you the day before the Goethe Hotel. Japard took you to see m the Supreme Guardian. He told me you were visitors from beyond the sky. Just like the interstellar travelers of ancient legend. People of all kinds that carried the will of the eons. Japard said that you wanted to help us reverse the damage that the eternal freeze and fragmentum continue to wreak on our planet. But that night, Mother summoned me and ordered me to take a detachment to arrest you. What happened? The Supreme Guardian didn't tell me the details and Japard had to rush back to the front line. I don't understand. Oh. The Silvermane guards withdrew to the surface long ago. I must avoid that identity here. Until we're back in the overworld, I propose a temporary truce and cooperation. Your true intentions are of interest to me. If it helps you to trust me, I'm willing to answer your questions to the best of my ability. Let me repeat. All I received were the Supreme Guardian's instructions. It is for the adjudication panel to pass judgment on the accused. All the Supreme Guardian told me was that your identities were counterfeit and that your intention was to overthrow the rule of the architects. Truthfully, I've never heard of this Stellaron. But if all this catastrophe could be brought to an end simply by sealing it, then I hope its existence proves to be real. Fragmentum monster activity on the surface intensified, and hostilities on the front line were critical. To resist the invasion, the Architects had no choice but to redeploy the guards to the front line. If we couldn't hold our defensive line, then we wouldn't be able to maintain our supply of aid to the underground, which would have collapsed without us. That was the Supreme Guardian's explanation. In truth, I've always felt like something important is being hidden. Whether it's the Architects, Mother, or Silvermane Guards, there's always an unnatural element to their actions. Since encountering you, the unexpected seems to have arrived in waves. I never thought I'd enter the underworld that has been sealed away for so long. I have a feeling that with you, I can pick up the lost threads and dispel my uncertainties. Mm. We should be going to see Wildfire. Let's move. <laughs>